What should online sessions look like? So the first thing you want to do is you want to set up your home environment. One very important thing to do is the lighting. Make sure that there is enough lighting. You can also adjust the screen of the computer so it's brighter or dimmer and let the student pick what they prefer. You also want to make sure that you're managing distractions. So you want to make sure that they're in a very quiet location that is distraction free. What's more, you also want to make sure that you have school supplies and the right school supplies right at hand. Things like pens and pencils, paper and dry erase boards. And the nice thing is we provide a checklist in the publication that comes along with this presentation that allows you to kind of look through and think about the things that you might want. What's more, you want to make sure that the seating is appropriate. If the child needs movement and they are what I call a kinesthetic learner, then you want to get something like this energy ball chair, which is actually in this image right here, that blue kind of bubble chair. Actually, that's exactly what I call them. I call them the bubble chairs. And they're great because they're bouncy, but they're not bouncing away from their work. It also helps them to maintain attention because they're not overly relaxed. They're having to use their core muscles to maintain an upright position. So I love them. I get my students to bounce on them. You can kind of wiggle on them, but it gives them that little bit of kinesthetics that helps them to maintain their attention. And then finally, you want to consider technical supplies, things like a headset. For some kids, that's going to, again, help to block out some distractions. You want to make sure that you have what you need for that particular professional. So that per professional might say, I need the child to have a mouse, or I want them to have an eye pencil or a trackball. Just ask them about what they want for the technology that they'll be using. My personal preference is to use an iPad Pro with an eye pencil. It makes it super fun and interactive. Did you have anything else to add, Michael? No, I think that's really, really good. It's just, again, it's, it's important to keep these things in mind because sometimes when we're so busy, we just... Uh, tend to miss some of the most basic common sense things. Yeah, and I, I find that this happens with the vast majority of my sessions. And what ends up happening is you're losing valuable time collecting supplies. And if you have everything right up front, then you're not going to lose that time during the session because that mm -hmm. time is really valuable. Yeah, big time. So there are some specific tools for online sessions that I believe that professionals should use. The first one is it's important for the student to be able to share online documents. And you can use all sorts of services for that. If you're using something like Zoom, they can share a document on the screen. Or if you're using Google Docs, both the student and the professional can be on the document at the same time and be working on the document at the same time. And number two, you also want to have a platform that enables the learning specialist or tutor to record the session. So if they're going over something very important, they can record it and then the student can watch it over again to help them whenever they need that particular strategy. Or there might be times where you want to do kind of an observation of what the learning specialist or tutor is doing. If they record the sessions, then you have the option of asking for the recorded session. Number three, you would like to have a platform where the teacher and student can write or draw on documents. And again, that is something that I know personally that you can do with Zoom. So when I pull up a document, and it can be a PDF document or a Word document, or even on my screen, they have a way that it kind of overlaps the screen so either the student or I can actually write on top of the screen by using an iPad. Uh, whether you're using the eye pencil or your finger or some other device to write, um, it's very, very cool because it makes any type of document interactive. Uh, Erica, will you take a second to explain what you mean by the Zoom platform? So Zoom is an online communication platform, and this is very similar to Skype or FaceTime, but it's a much more stable platform that offers a lot of bells and whistles that these other programs don't offer. 
Number four, you want to ensure stability and that you have few connectivity issues, and we have talked about that in the past. And then five, you want a platform that allows a teacher and a student to work on text documents simultaneously, and we did talk about that. This is my favorite part. <laughs> So now I'm actually going to share with you some video demonstrations that I have recorded in the past. And these are primarily for teachers to show them how to use Zoom. And the first one is just a lesson, a mock lesson that I'm doing on perimeter. And then the second one is using some of my own personal materials. This one is called Following Directions the Fun and Easy Way. And it works on language-based issues for kids. It's great for kids with dyslexia and other language-based learning disabilities. And it really helps to strengthen the core skills that are needed for multiple choice tests and understanding directions. So I just really wanted to show you a little bit about what it looks like from my perspective of when I'm doing an online session on that platform called Zoom. Okay, so now I've got to, I've got to indicate to my student what the, the lengths of the sides are. So let's say that this side, I've got to hit pen. Okay, say this side is three, three inches, and this side is seven inches. Now I might say to my student, do you know what the length of the other sides are? If they know, then they can fill it in. Say they, they're not sure, well, you can, you can guide them to the answer and say, well, opposite sides are the same length on rectangles. So what do you think the lengths are of those other two sides? So maybe they can figure it out. Maybe they change their color to green and they put in, okay. Oh, I gotta hit the pen. Seven inches and three inches. So now I like to teach them a little strategy here. What I do is I tell them, all right, let's go ahead and look at the word perimeter. It kind of sounds like perimeter. And a lot of kids have, you know, been in races and they have probably heard of like a meter dash. So I call it the perimeter dash. And the perimeter dash is peri has to run all the way around the field. So now I will do a demonstration with using the highlighter, pick yellow and the highlighter to show them. So this is Perry running all the way around the track. And that helps them to see that the perimeter is actually just the distance all the way around the rectangle, or in this case, the track. And so all the student has to do now, and you can let them know, is to add up the lengths of the sides. So um, you can see that just by using this, this is just fantastic. And it makes it very, very interactive. And say there are, they get confused, you can point things out by using the spotlight. Um, you can do all sorts of things. So now you can actually write out the answer using the keyboard, or I just like to, to use the pen to write out what we're going to do here. So what we've got to do is we've got to add the sides and we're going to say three plus seven plus three plus seven. And so you can also do a little bit of instruction here where you show them that, wow, okay, we know that three and seven is 10, and three and seven is 10, so 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 what? 20 inches. And that is your final answer. So here's my following directions uh, activity from my following directions intermediate, which uh, features two different types of activities. One is the what am I, and then another one simulates a maze where they have to follow directions. When I'm using Zoom, what I have here at the top, I'll have to overlap an image because it doesn't show you in the video. But uh, at the top, there is a menu, a drop down menu that says mute stop video, manage participants, new share, pause share, annotate, and more. If I go to annotate and I click on that, it opens another dropdown where I can change the mouse, I can change, I can add text, I can draw, I can change the cursor, I can change the color, I can erase and so forth. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the uh, draw and I'm going to click the line. And if you go under color and at the bottom, you can actually make the line a little bit fatter, which is what I like to do. So let's go ahead and start the activity. Number one, I'm in one of the rows under the row of the pig. Okay, the row of the pig is the first row. And if I'm under the row of the pig, then I can't be in the first row. Number two, I'm in one of the rows below the row with the frog. Now, the frog is in the second row. So if I'm below that row, then I can't be the second row. Number three, I'm in one of the columns to the right of the column with the camel. And here is column one. I find that a lot of my students confuse columns and rows. So this is a nice way for them to, to practice that. Number four, I'm between the first and final. So that was just a little demonstration for you guys to get a little bit of a sense of how interactive it can be. And do note that I was just giving an instruction to a theoretical person. But if I was actually doing that with the student, there would be an image of both of us on the side so we'd be able to see each other. In addition, they would also be able to write on the document as well. So that makes it super interactive and super fun. That was great. Now, we were thinking that one way to really add value for you, for all the people that register for this, was to create two downloadable PDF resources. I'm going to go through each one of these. One is the takeaways PDF, and the other one is called simplifying the interview process. So actually, I'm going to talk to you about what's included in the simplifying the interview process. We thought that Again, if interviewing people is not something you do on a regular basis, having a little bit of structure can be super helpful. So we built this PDF so that you can have contact information for the interviewees, you know, with their with the date of the, of the contact, their name and address, their phone and email, notes about them. And then there is the opportunity to write notes about every specific question that you ask. And we included the 14 main questions that we discussed earlier. So we hope that you'll find this to be a useful anchor point for you as you begin to do your interview process. In the next PDF document, we're talking about takeaways. We've got a lot of stuff here for you. We reiterated or we readdressed talking about, you know, what kind of educational support professional you might be looking for. Uh, we included some referral sites, but I think I want to take a moment to speak with you about this because we know that if you're now expanding your net across the United States, you're going to want a little bit of a head start or a little bit of help with regard to who's really out there. Who should I really speak to? So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to provide you with some information about some specific groups who have experience with online tutoring. But we also want to make it super clear we can't necessarily endorse any individual business school or program. But we can tell you that we know that these people are out there and they're doing it and they're very open to being interviewed to see if they're a good fit for your child. We also uh, included the, the checklist for setting up the home environment. And because the Orton-Gillingham approach is such a common or well-regarded approach for reading, uh, we also provided you with some basic information about what it is, how it's taught, and just so that you've got some information, you can just kind of get your arms around that a little bit, and that'll help drive any other kind of research that you do. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of information in here. We wanted to make sure that you had something you could actually take away and hold on to and study it as you need to. And of course, we're open to any questions or comments that you have about other things that you may find helpful as well. Yeah, and I also wanted to say, you know, I think it's important that you realize that we are here to help and we're not trying to be difficult by not giving you very specific people to work with. The reason why we can't do that is because we don't know the individual needs of your child. If we did, it would be easier for us to line you up with the best person. You are the expert about what your child's needs are. So you are the best person to find the needed individual. We will give you these wonderful pools 
uh, where you can go to and find the people that you want to interview. So just so you know that, you know, we, we really are here to help. And if you do have any questions, let us know. So here you can find out more about our contact information, websites, blogs, and social media. Be sure to sign up for our newsletters so that you can stay abreast of our growing content. Thanks so much. Bye.